Um, uh, Mombi Maina, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mombi Maina. <laughs> 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 um, uh, I'm an actor. I've been acting for about, uh, apparently I've been active, as they say, for about seven years now. Um, it's my passion, and I'm here to speak about using my body to tell stories. Okay. Yeah. How did you decide or discover like this was your passion? Because wh when I knew you, like as a performer, you were a dancer. Yes. You were doing what Happily Joyce so. just did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Um, in fact, it was a funny story because it was my sister who took me um, for an audition. She was the one auditioning, and she insisted that I should try. And so did the casting director. And I said, no. And we fought. And we fought. And we fought. <laughs> and my sister said, she's not leaving until I try. So I said, OK, fine. And um, for me, I just kept thinking, I would rather be dancing any day. Do not put a camera in front of me. I'm like, I don't know what to do <laughs> at that point. But um, I ended up getting one of the lead roles, and that was really exciting. But I went back to the corporate world, and I had a bit of an epiphany where I asked myself, if I had, for instance, all the money in the world or all of my dreams were coming true, what is the one thing that I would be doing with myself? And acting is the first thing that snapped up. I kept thinking, if I woke up in the morning knowing that I'm doing this every day, I'm in bliss. You're, in, you're, you're happy. I'm happy. What were you doing in the corporate world? <laughs> what didn't I do? <laughs> <laughs> um, I started off cleaning offices, by the way. I was an office cleaner at some point. Cleaning offices? Oh, yeah. I was on it. Okay. I was good at it. The OCD was really helpful. Okay. <laughs> so I was really good. <laughs> and then um, I ended up in administration. And so I started working at an advertising agency. And then I moved on to investment banking. And I mean, the money. I can't great. see you in the investment banking world. <sighs> Suits and navy blue, and it, you know? It was a struggle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, uh, my bosses kept laughing at me because they knew deep down I was a thespian and that's what I wanted to do. So they'd just laugh at me and be like, some days, Mumbi, you just come to work and you look like a spice girl. Like your hair is all over the place, you have green nail polish, you just never <laughs> follow the rules. And that's when I knew, okay, okay, it's time. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're in, you're, so you're in banking, mm -hmm. and then, um, so you, st you start acting. What was the first project that you were in love with, that you were like, this one I'm proud of? Well, honestly, I've been, I've been in love with every single project that I've been on. Okay. Oddly. I've had different um, <laughs> reactions towards every day. Okay, we, so we know you from Mali. What was the reaction from that, for example? Uh, there were very many positive and very many negative ones. Um, okay. Negative was because of the character that I was playing, Nandi, and she was very vicious and uh, <laughs> controversial, you know, trying to poison her mom and stuff like that on a casual day. But, uh -huh. um, but it also got a bit difficult for me to play that role just because my body kept coming up specifically from the male species. <laughs> um, and it became something that became very popular where I started feeling like my assets, as they call them. <laughs> your, your posterior, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the blogs would come up and they would say, um, she's very well known for her assets. Less about my work, but more about my I assets. I was just about to ask, what's that like? Yeah, that, that was painful. And at some point, I, I had to realize that it's not about them, it's, it's, I mean, it's not about me, it's actually about just their, them mirroring their own ideas of what I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to look like or putting me in some box. Okay. Yeah? And um, once I let go of that, I felt free. And maybe also having permission to judge the female form and talk about it. Every day. And then because you're in the public space, mm. it's like excess permission. Yeah, and you don't you even know. have to be an actor to go through that. I think every woman's always being judged and told how she's supposed to be, what she's supposed to look like, what size she's supposed to be, what she's supposed to wear. And even <laughs> comments, umebeba. Mm. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've yeah. added. Yeah. You've, you've lost. You've lost. Like, we hear these you're comments like, all the time. Uh, thanks. <laughs> you yes, know, you don't but know what now to professionally, say. It, it, has a it has a deeper impact. It does. Did it ever make you want to quit? No. Oh. No. It did make me want to lose weight for the wrong reasons, though. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you lose the weight? I lost weight, but for the right reasons. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I lost weight just because I had a new role, and I realized that I needed to be really fit for it. So automatically, I found myself losing weight. And then, of course, everyone was mad at me because apparently I looked better, bigger. <laughs> so there was no winning if that was the case. But yes. I was losing weight for that. 
I'd have lost myself in order to please other people. To, yes, okay. Yeah. So you've done roles where like, you have to be particularly sensual. Mm-hmm. Is it that you're in a period <laughs> of your life where you feel sensual <laughs> and you can then carry that off? Don't women always feel sensual? Women? No. <laughs> <laughs> and if you always feel sensual, then please tell us God how. Bless. No, no, no. <laughs> um, wow, where do I even begin? Um, I guess something just switches off for me and it becomes just a role that I'm playing. The same way you can be asked to be angry right now, but you're not angry. You're in a happy mood. You're very okay. happy, in fact. <laughs> okay. you know? But then now you have to bring out that emotion and have the audience believe that you are angry. And you can cultivate that. That doesn't mean that you're actually angry in real life. And that's the same way I can behave like I am feeling sensual, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth for me at that moment. Have you ever had to kiss somebody you didn't like? Like, you know, you tell, because from the way you're you're describing it, it's like, it's Monday, I'm at work. I have to be angry, I have to cry next, and then I have to laugh next, and maybe I have to kiss this guy who I'd never kiss in real life. just described my entire job. (laughs) Okay. And then you kiss the guy. Yeah. What was that like? Not fun. That's just the honest truth. (laughs) How do you make peace with it? Does it sit with you later? Um... I think, as I said, I think I have an on and off button. I swear, I may not be normal. Okay. (laughs) But I do have an on and off button. Um, Basically, the thing is you don't have a personal relationship with most of these people that you find yourself having to to have these very intimate scenes with. So if you're able to leave that on set and move on, then that's fine. The problem is that they cross the line. One, mostly it's better to speak about the boundaries that you have with each other and with the director. What are your boundaries? Can I ask? Like, I've heard some actresses who say, I don't kiss, or I don't kiss with tongue, or... Yeah, I thought I had some very serious boundaries until I did Sense8. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, so maybe I don't know everything about what my boundaries okay. are. But I think for me, what's more important is what the role is, and what story it is that I'm trying to tell. Because, you know, um, I'm not just going to wake up and say, hey, you know what, let me just go and just kiss every person that I see on on set. No, Uh it's not what's going to happen. But for me, what am I trying to say? And who am I saying it to? You know, um, some of the stories where I've had to kiss people, it um, was in Jane and Abel, and the character was a very lonely and, and sad wife. And she kissed another man to get the attention of her husband. And that mm. didn't even work, you know? Oh, wow. And, and for me, I felt like it was so, I felt really sad for her. And I felt, and I know that so many people are in such situations where you just, you're in a marriage and then you just, just trying just to get a reaction, working, confirmation. You know? Are you still with me in Hello, the marriage? Hi, and you know? nothing. And nothing. And, and I, I, I tend to feel so much compassion for a lot of the characters that I've played that in reality, it's more than just the role that I'm playing. I'm telling a story, and I'm hopefully reaching people who are going to resonate with that and heal from that. Okay, and maybe see themselves in it and think, yeah. oh my God, where am I really going with yeah, this? Yeah, because okay. if, you, if, you, if you're connected to a character, you're, there's something that you're mirroring. Okay. There's a part of you that's resonating, that's, that's connecting with that person, and that's because of something that's happening with you or someone in your life, ah. and that's the responsibility that I feel. Do some characters stay with you and affect, like, do you need to decompress? Yes. Because it sounds like some characters are heavier than others. Yes. So, okay, how do you decompress? Um, uh, contrary to popular belief, I can be very introverted. Okay. If you've seen me in the club, you may not believe this. I've seen you in the club. I'm finding it hard to believe. Believe it. <laughs> believe it. Um, so, for me, I, I tend to isolate. Uh, it, it, I don't know how long it, it, it takes sometimes. It's, it's take, those, those are characters that took me about a year to fully... A whole year to decompress? Yeah, and I didn't realize that that was the problem. I didn't realize that I was actually just... How long did you play character. the character? Um, two years. Oh. Yeah, but I didn't realize, I hadn't connected it. This is like inviting a whole new person to your life. Yeah, and so sometimes it, it's draining because that person can be going through hell. <laughs> and then you're feeling like you're going through hell with them. And oh. imagine if you're playing that character every day, five days a week for one year straight. So it when you heard Julie you. talking about trauma and how muscle memory and you hold these things. I was like, did you touch me? <laughs> I'm now connecting the dots, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it's like for you. Yeah. 
Okay, so maybe, okay, I'm glad you've met Julie now. Oh, <laughs> maybe I the decompression can take less than a year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. tell us about Sense8. So let me explain to the audience. If you haven't watched Sense8, it is a show on Netflix. Um, they did two seasons and a lot of it, some of it was based here in Nairobi. Yeah. Uh, Moby played a character and had a sex scene. So when I watched this, I was like, she must be in our bodies. We must talk about how you do this professionally. So tell us about Sensei. Um, I, what I loved about how um, the producers dealt with it especially is that you know from the audition stage what your character might be asked to do. So you have the choice. They don't ambush you and then tell you randomly, okay, so today this is what's happening, <laughs> you know? So you have time to process it and decide for yourself, is this what I want to do? But they'll also give you a backstory about the character and that's what they did for me. And that's who I fell in love with. Because it's so rare to see um, a sexually empowered African woman on Hollywood screens, you know, who looks like me, who's smart, who's gone, educated, who's got her life together, who's even from an affluent family. It's very rare. Most of the time we tend to see the stories of Kibera or, you know, just, just flies on the face. And Destitution. And yes. heaven knows what else. You know, you just don't get to see what's happening in the other side of the country or mm. in Africa for that matter. And that's what really caught me. So having the opportunity to be that person who shares that story, oh, I was done. I was like, <laughs> okay, this is it. I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'll figure out the nudity. I'll figure it out as okay. we go, you know? Yeah. Okay. What was what was shooting that scene like? Um at first very scary. Before um, especially once I found out I got the role. I had all these ideas in my head of how it's going to be shot because I am a creative person. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was panicking, in fact, to be honest. Um, I'd seen, you know, if you've watched Sense8, you know, everything's very tastefully done. But um, I was very scared, you know. And, and besides being scared, I started having a lot of questions about who I am and what my thoughts are about my body and playing that role you know, as I am, authentically. But you're very body positive. I've always... Self-accepting. most of the time. Okay. <laughs> I've always been very body positive. And now I had to ask myself, why am I starting to have certain thoughts like, maybe I need to lose weight for this. Maybe I need to tone this up. Maybe if I, you know, nip, tuck, and this, that. You know, why, where were these thoughts coming? Why was I thinking maybe I need to diet, crash diet right before the day? You know, and I was having all these thoughts all the time. But it, it makes sense. In the, um, usually the people who see us naked or, an, or even aspects of us naked are, in, it's in a private setting. Yeah. And you kind of, we like to believe that we control that setting, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Ideally, you should control that setting. Yeah. But this one is handing over that control to like an art director, a director, a DOP, the lighting guy, and like sets are full of people. Yeah. Yeah. So was it a world. closed? <laughs> it was a closed set, and we were very um, strict on the, on my contract about a lot of things that that I preferred and things that I didn't prefer. They were very sensitive to what um, they felt would make me comfortable. Um, so that also put me at ease, just knowing that okay, <laughs> I'm not just gonna walk there and, and you know, I was gonna say something very stupid, but I won't. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So once I. Once I had to now deal with myself and realize, okay, if I'm going to be this person who keeps speaking about being confident in yourself, whatever skin that you're in, whether you're bigger, whether you're smaller, whether you're, you're feeling you know, terrible that day, whether you're bloated, whether you're in your periods, whether you're this, whether you're gonna feel good in your own body, yes. how I, why do I want to start changing things about myself now that I'm going to be exposed, quote unquote. Yes. You know, and I felt like a fraud to myself, I was like, this is not who I am, you know? I would always, I'd always uh, semi-judge people who are on, in Hollywood who would have those moments of, you know, I'm very skinny and I'm this and that and this is why I'm beautiful. But then oh. why was I starting to almost envy that? The, the skinny. Not really, envy, not really the skinny, but Were just you envying the perfect that? idea of what a body is supposed to look like, okay. a female body is supposed to look like. Were you envying the actual body or perhaps the 
the acceptance of that. You know, like when you're, when you're thin or whatever, like yeah. by Hollywood standards, yeah. there's already a crowd that's waiting to call you beautiful. Yeah. Whereas if you're not that, yeah. It's like you kind of have to fight for space. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. <laughs> Justify. Yeah. Even yeah. me. I am yeah. gay in the beauty. And that's, that's <laughs> part of the reason yeah. that I loved being cast for this role was that they were going in as far as being authentic and telling the truth. And part of the reason that I did get the role was because of my body type. Okay. You know? So I'm just having all these crazy ideas in my head <laughs> when in reality, it's all an illusion. Okay. You know? Are you proud of it? I am. I've watched it. You should be proud. <laughs> I was like, what? She really did this. <laughs> I am. Um, it's, it's art. Okay. You know, it's art. And then that for me was what's most important. So what are you looking forward to doing with your body now in terms of storytelling? Would you gain like a crazy amount of weight or lose? It depends on the story. It depends on the role. But yeah, why not? As long as I'm healthy and I'm taking care of myself, I would. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking forward to? Like what kind of role do you want to play next? That is a tough one. I just came <laughs> from an audition, so I'm like, should I okay. say? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm open. I'm open to, to, you to adventure and challenges. And you don't have like a career trajectory, like I want to play this role and I want to do this and I want to do... I used to. Or 25 movies. I was listening to Tiffany Haddish. She was saying she wants to do 50 movies by the time she's 50. Wow. Yes. Hey, kudos. I hope she, hope she does. Okay. Um, I, I don't. I used to. When I first started off, I really had this idea of everything that I wanted to accomplish by a certain age. Okay. And, and things have just flipped for me. So many things have happened in ways that I never thought that they would. Like, for instance, I never thought I'd do such an extremely sensual scene so early on in my career. I thought, I'll do that, like... 20 years later. 20 years. Most people, it's the reverse. Let me do it now, oh, before like, the babies. 20 years later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, and I thank God for it. I'm, I'm glad that things have happened the way they have. I mean, when I was like 19, I wanted seven children. I thank God I don't have this. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seven children. Just wait, anyway. <laughs> no, like, sir, yo, seven. I had it all planned out. I'll give birth to five. I'll adopt two. I'll meet my man when I'm 21. I'll be married at 23. By 30, I'm done. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for not answering for my not prayers. For not answering my prayers. I'm telling you. So I, I've learned to just let go. Okay. You know, and, and experience my own growth. Uh -huh. You know, and I believe that the more that you grow internally, you attract the things that you're ready for. Ah, yeah. amen. Say that amen. again. <laughs> Say that again, seriously. The more that you grow internally is when you attract the things that you're ready for. Okay. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and thank you, Moby. <laughs>